Howdy, howdy. Welcome back to my channel and building out an expedition camper. And this is now build series video number 59 on this whole camper build section. And we're now building out an electrically sliding dining table. So that's why it's actually going to slide out almost four feet. And this is a solution to keeping the garage as tall as it can be and the bed as low as it can be. So after going ahead and installing these fourth water tanks, the third and fourth water tanks to give me a little over 100 gallons of fresh water storage and get it all in the kitchen cabinet framing. Now we're moving on a little bit to the inside where it's nice and warm and cushy so we can get these things built. So let me show you a little bit of some tips and tricks on how we keep everything organized as well and how we go and build this out. All right, so what I'm doing here is getting my track. This is an aluminum track with some cartridge sliders that I have in this bag here. These cartridge sliders will slide up and down. They actually won't slide within the track or the sliders are actually going to be mounted in a, in a stable position, uh, a fixed position, and it's actually the slides here that are going to slide out of the cartridges. Of course, it won't slide out. They'll stay retained in there. But I had to reverse the way it would normally be installed. It's all the same either way. Both pieces are, you know, one's fixed and one's moving together. But I had to reverse the way it was done just because of the insulation that I need to do in the camper and the space and everything else that's there. It just worked out better that way. But also the tracks now are going to be mounted to my table frame, which that's what this is. This is my dinette table frame. This is going to be capped with a really nice thick piece of what's planned for right now is a is a really recycled paper product that's compressed and glued together and, and it becomes finished so hard that it, it's basically about as hard as granite is and yet it's made from recycled product it's very durable it's lighter weight than of course a hard material like that and it's torsionally extremely strong which can add a lot of torsional stiffness to this dinette table which is what I'm after also these slides being mounted to the the dinette table frame here are going to add a little bit of stiffness too. These really do not flex in this uh, longitudinal position at all. And so they're going to be very strong. And I have a lot of mounting holes there, 24 of them along this 60 inch track. So here's how I'm doing this to make this really easy and quick for me is I have my, my little bag and box of extras. <laughs> my extra box of these in the right size. To, uh, to build a slide this in there and that's all I'm going to do is literally just slide it in. So I just simply start on one end and just keep working my way down. And on this end, one little trick here is I'm starting with the little slide in, I'll call them rectangular nuts. And part of what I'm doing is because they're actually a little bit uh, offset, meaning that the one side, the hole is closer to one end than it is the other end. And that allows me to get this track further all the way down to the end here, which is what I want. I want it almost all the way down to the end when it's captive within this track. And so I can put the short end all the way down to that end. And then the rest of these I am going to do with these economy nuts, which are these really nice rounded nuts. Uh, they don't have a lot of thread, which I don't need a lot here. There's so many of these screws, and really the force is going to be under shear, not so much under tension. Very little force under tension at all. And so these economy nuts are more than strong enough for this, especially when there's 24 of these. It's significant. And then a little flanged hex head that is going to be recessed right within this track here. And interesting enough, on this track, it actually calls for, I believe it's an M4, and I'm using a 1032, and I'm using a 1032 because I already have them. I don't have to go then go buy out, buy M4 nuts, which are really hard to get. And, and then it's another thing I have to stock. Instead, the 1032s is my standard. So, and the, the, the 1032, I think, is 4.2 millimeters in diameter versus an M4 is 4 millimeters in diameter. So it's barely a little bit bigger, and it actually gives me a slight advantage. It allows this screw to be just a little bit tighter within the recessed hole here, but still be fully recessed within that, that groove that's created. And of course, be able to keep a, a common size as the other benefit for me. So it makes it really easy and quick for me to work through here. And I'm using these economy nuts because they're rounded on the ends, ends and therefore it makes it really easy to slide these into place. And, to, and I'll show you that here in a minute. And they're a lot less expensive than a drop-in nut. A drop-in nut's anywhere from like a dollar to call it as much as about $2 a piece, but figure about $1.25, $1.50 a piece. Pretty significant. These little economy nuts are like 30 cents a piece or a 
quarter piece, something around there. The regular nuts can be as much as about 40 or 50 cents a piece. So still, let's just call it between a, a third to a fifth the cost of a drop-in nut. So significantly less expensive, and they all slide in right now, being that this is out right all the way down this track. So of course, I thought through that as I was building this to think through all that. And I thought through how to build this thing so I could slide everything in as I was building it instead of using any drop-in nuts and trying to give as much torsional strength as possible. So let me finish this up and I'm just going to slide this in. All right, so I have my dinette frame, dinette table frame finished. I've got my track slide. I have my shorter nut down here in this end and I want to put the short end all the way down in this end. So I'm simply going to line these two up, make sure I get that one in the right way to start. And then all I have to do with these low cost economy nuts is simply just rotate them so that they line up into this slot and just keep sliding them on down. So there's, again, there's 24 of these in here. And so there's a heck of a lot, but this is a really quick way to do it. It took me about two minutes to screw all 24 of these screws into their economy nuts through the hole in the track slide here, just doing them one at a time, just moving on down the track, and that's pretty quick. I did not, of course, tighten them up. I just went ahead and just got them started in the nuts so that I can slide them in here. And there's all the way down, almost the end, one to go. Now I'm going to slide my dinette table back down because this dinette table is a little bit longer than my track slide is here. And make sure I can get down all the way, there we go, look at that, almost all the way right down the end, which is so rad. Now, I'm gonna do two more things, right? One is, I'm gonna slide this up like this, and I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna, while I'm pushing this all the way down to the end to make sure I've got it bottom out, because I want it as close to the front here as possible, I'm also gonna be pulling the track this way, because they're 1032s, this is the advantage using a 1032 and a one inch profile. Obviously the equivalent in other profiles, you can have a smaller or larger size. In the one inch profile, I can use a quarter 20 bolt or a 1032. And that, again, being that there's 24 of these, there's hardly any tension force at all in these, just some sheer force. And it's very little of that as, as it is. It's just a table that's gonna slide out and that's it. There's gonna be a lot of force on. There's already gonna be plenty strong. I am going to, what I'm doing is pulling this down because the 1032 is a little bit of slot with, uh, while they're loose within the extrusion here. And so by pulling it all the way down, I can actually now create it so that this track is basically flush with the top because this track is about a tenth of an inch taller or wider than a one inch extrusion. And being that it's one tenth of an inch wider, I want my tabletop, I pull it down, now my tabletop can sit flush up against the surface here. And by sitting flush up against the surface on the top, my tabletop will be nice and flush up there, make it a lot easier to make the tabletop and cover up this track on the top, overlapping it, making it a really nice uh, look and everything else. The track is basically going to be hidden within or underneath the tabletop. On the bottom side, I'm actually going to finish it with, I haven't quite decided yet, it may be actually a sheet of carbon fiber to give it some additional torsional rigidity and a little bit of a look and, and, and be a non-conductive. So if your knees touch up against the bottom of the frame here when it's cold, it won't feel cold or anything like that. But it's mostly a torsional rigidity. It's very thin as well, which is what I'm looking for. Thin because it is so incredibly strong, but it's also really pricey. And so another option is, of course, a sheet of some uh, structural fiberglass. Uh, which is another option, and that's uh, a really good way to go too. It's also very inexpensive, lightweight, non-thermally conductive, and of course insulated, not, not electrically conductive also. Uh, not that that should matter in this case, but that's another option. I can also use a wood product, but it won't really be seen, and a, and a wood product isn't going to add as much torsional rigidity as those other materials will. And I sort of could do a metal, but then again, if you brush up alongside with your knee or something above the table, it's gonna feel cold. And so that is one option. It's not gonna have as much of a benefit on the bottom and just add a little more cost and weight than those other materials, at least for the fiberglass. But again, while I'm tightening these up, I'm keeping the pressure pulling this track towards me to make sure that it stays down low and as flush as I can. So just another little tip and trick. 
And by doing this, working inside the house right now, it's warmer inside the house. I have a nice carpeted floor here, which I do have a throw carpet out in the garage and also rubber mat up there, which I'll set things down to work on. But I'm out of space. It, it is a construction zone, and I call it the shipping receiving area right now, the place where I'd normally work in something like this. It is full of boxes, lots of boxes and parts and things that are been arriving literally by the day that are to be installed into the camper, but I have to keep finishing these things up so I get them installed. And now I get this table done, the dinette table platform. I can get this out of the way, just another thing I can get out of the way. It's a few little extra parts and I'll make room now for the next things to get built out, which are gonna be the bed cabinets and also the kitchen cabinets, the upper portion of the kitchen cabinets that the bases are glued in. So I can, that's what all these materials are behind here, stacked up and all in ready to go, stacked up by their type, their size and or how they're machined. And so I can get ready to go get those installed and then I'll make room in here for the next wave of cabinet framing to come in and uh, proceed. And one thing, maybe I'll just talk through quickly here. With this dinette tabletop, it is only going to slide out 40 inches in length. But I have 66 inches under the bed platform. And I'm this, I made this so it's actually 60 inches long, in part because just the end cabinet here is going to slide just slightly into it. But, but also, it, there's a couple of reasons why the tracks only come in, uh, up to 60 inches long. And so this gives me, uh, but in this case, only 57 or 58 inches long because they're metric. And so it's a meter and a half or whatever that is, or one, one, 14 or 40 meters, uh, millimeters is what this came in. So just that's the longest I could get it in. So because that track is the longest it comes, there's not really any benefit to going longer on my table, dinette table. But my 40 inches when it comes to here, that gives me this additional space here for my tracks uh, sliders that are going to be in here which are really going to hold this in a place and so those are incredibly strong they're actually adjustable and have even wipers to keep clean it out but they will uh, keep this top the uh, table from basically uh, moving downward so it should give it a lot of strength to hold it in place that's the whole idea behind it and so that's what's going to do and and so that captive space that'll be underneath the bed is really there to retain the dinette table in its horizontal position and allow it to then continue to slide in or out uh, while I have a linear actuator going down the middle that's going to push it out or pull it in and that way it's controllable to any depth of that coming in or out so it can very easily and gently slide in a little bit to get up and out of the dinette easily and and go move around or go back into the kitchen or go to the bathroom or something like that and come back in again or completely slide all the way when just chilling out in the dinette or going to bed or when somebody's sleeping in the dinette as a backup bed the seats are slid down and the other option is it can also be slid out just a little bit say 10 inches or so to be the little cocktail table so just sitting back you want to watch a movie or just kind of chill out with a couple of friends you have some little small table for cocktails instead of this really big table so that's the benefit of that and also being a linear actuator it isn't so much that it's a it's a cool or gee whiz factor it's actually that i don't need a latch at the front of it which is just visually obstructive kind of gets in a way and i have to design a little mechanism to latch it and so forth at the at the front of it which is really an aesthetic place of it I want that to look really nice and clean and neat being that it's a dinette table and so by having a latch I don't need a latch and now it'll hold it all the way closed it'll hold it all the way open or anywhere in between so that's the real benefit of that and the cost of linear actuator yes it's more than a latch but by the time you add the latch and the mechanism all the stuff to retain it and everything else it ends up not being that much more, but again, all these are benefits, particularly I don't need a bunch of like a slide bolts or something to hold this in some specific open position. You know, the last thing I do is have a bunch of drinks or food on the table and then have it start sliding in or out or get pushed in or out because someone bumps it and then your food and drinks get pushed out of the way, fall to the ground, everything else. So now it's gonna be absolutely static in that position it's set while being used in that position. So those are the benefits of it. And all you can get by with all that with a single linear actuator at way more enough force to hold it in its position anywhere from hundreds of pounds, you know, let's just say roughly hundreds of pounds. I, I get the exact spec on that, but that'll fit and be flush within the table so it'll be completely hidden out of the way. 
So there you go, that's how I'm doing this. So I'm pretty excited to be able to get this in place. This was purely a solution having the dining table be sliding and slide out from underneath the, the bed and also be in a linear action. It was all just solutions to some of the problems that were created, so to speak, of how the bed, keeping the bed height down, keeping the garage height as high as it can go, allowing the space within the dinette and as much space in the kitchen and not have to have this pass-through space between the two, getting the table out of the way. If I have a table that retracts down, it's kind of going to make it really awkward when getting into the dine, into bed over the dinette. You have to step over this table, even though it's at essentially the bench height, but that, those are already elevated as it is off the kitchen floor height, so it makes it awkward getting out of there. If it's something that slides out of the way to either side, I didn't like how that would work. It wouldn't feel, I think, as stable or secure. And then it's always going to kind of be in a way. If you have four people sitting at a dinette, if the table slides over into one, two of them, they're going to be squished while the other you know people on the other side can get in or out and vice versa so I thought this was the best overall solution to accommodate everything that I wanted from a functionality point of view so and I see I already got my mounts in there for the tabletop that's going to come in they're just casually placed right now there'll be a few more that'll be added they're just kind of generally placed right now just in a general position and then this will all be tightened up and stuff before it's all completed uh, but and hey now it's done all the way so another piece of furniture complete ready to go into the new camper when it's ready which will be soon as the bed platform is about ready to be installed which will be soon still lots to do in the kitchen cabinetry coming up thank you for watching if you have any questions or anything on this by all means reach out and ask and i look forward to sharing more with you soon thank you for watching subscribing and liking